What's up my friends, it's Mike again. Glad to have you guys back. Today we're gonna talk about the Huawei P40 Pro and the P40 Pro Plus, which I've been using for the past 30 days. As a full-time content creator on YouTube and Instagram, I was very interested to see how the cameras performed because I've heard really good things about it. So I reached out to Huawei and they sent me both of these review units for me to use and see what it is really like using these on a daily basis. So with that being said, I'm not paid to say anything good or bad about it. If it sucks, I'll definitely let you guys know and uh, let's get started. So after 30 days, days of making content with this phone, I gotta say that I can finally not bring my RX100 anymore. So talking about video first, when I did the comparison, the optical stabilization in this was really good. The RX100 footage was actually unusable because it shook so much. So when I was walking around with both devices, the phone really smoothed out the footage as if I was using a gimbal. So the stabilization is really impressive on the phone. The other thing is that I actually filmed in 4K. So when there's a lot of light around or in daylight, there's a lot of details and the images are really crazy. And the other thing is that it's really versatile for video because of the super wide angle. So when I'm holding it out like this, I can actually see my whole background and myself included. So it's really good for vlogging. And most importantly, the phone records audio very clearly. It actually isolated a lot of the wind noise that I heard. And with the phone nailing all those points, it was really, really impressive as a everyday camera. The only thing that I can critique it on the video side is that in pro mode, there's no option to adjust your shutter speed. So I don't know if it's fixed or if it's automatic in the back background, but it's really a software thing. I hope that they can add it in. The other negative is that in low light, the video isn't that good. It gets really grainy. And of course that is expected because the sensor size is really small when compared to my RX100. But in photography, the low light in this is actually really surprisingly good. So I took a lot of photos of the P40 Pro Plus and I use it to take pictures on my Instagram as well. And I noticed that it does take a picture, but then it also edits the photo as well to like adjust everything. So it looks good without you having to do anything. I do have to note that you do have to use the high resolution mode to get the best picture quality. And by the way, the ultra wide and the main camera on both these phones are exactly the same. It's only the telephoto lenses that are different. You're able to zoom a bit better on the Pro Plus. You can go up to 10X versus the Pro can only optically zoom to 5x and digitally the Pro Plus can go up to 100x and this can go up to 50x. So I gotta say that I normally don't ever zoom up to 5x or 10x. I usually just use the ultra wide or at most 3x for all the photography and videos that I do. If you are a wildlife animal picture taker, then the Pro Plus might be something that's more suited to your needs. But for me, the camera in the Pro is actually really good already. But anyways, if you do wanna take night shots, there is a night shot mode. And here are some of the examples that I took. So these shots were shot at night. It was really dark and I couldn't really see with my eyes so it's quite impressive that the camera can do this well in super low light. So next up, we're gonna talk about the build quality and the user experience. So the P40 Pro and the P40 Pro Plus are actually exactly the same size. The Pro Plus is made of a ceramic material, which makes it a bit heavier. But in reality, the difference isn't that noticeable. I did find that with the Pro Plus, it has a mirror-like finish so that I can like check my teeth after dinner kind of thing and just before I shoot myself so that I won't look weird or if I have anything on my face, except my acne, I can't get that off my face. But with the frosted finish, it looks really cool. This is the silver frost, but in my opinion, it's more like a baby blue frost kind of thing. I'm not sure if that's supposed to be the way it is, but that's what it looks like on camera too. But I do find that there's a lot more smudges on the Pro Plus versus the frosted finish, which does have a lot of smudges, but is way less noticeable. And as for the displays, both phones use exactly the same display. The refresh rate is 90 Hertz and everything looks really smooth on the screen. But what I like most about the displays are the built-in fingerprint scanners and the face detection. And this has been super useful because because, you know, nowadays we're wearing masks. So with the built-in fingerprint scanner, it's super fast and reliable. I really like it. And the other thing is that with the face detection, there's actually a depth sensor in the front as well as the camera. So it does give you an extra layer of security. And this is really useful when I'm on my one wheel and I have my gloves on, I can't use my fingerprint scanner. So when I just lift up my phone, it detects it right away and it unlocks right away. I don't have to swipe or anything. And overall, it's just very easy to access your phone very securely and quickly. So the other thing that's worth mentioning mentioning is the ease of use with the phone. So first of all, the shape of these phones are actually very nice in my hands. It fits very well. And when I'm in an app, it's very easy for my thumb to go down and swipe up to go back to the home screen. And the other thing with screenshots is that you can double tap it to take a screenshot. So that's quite unique. And if you only wanted to take a screenshot of a partial part of the screen, you knock on it and then you like draw a circle or whatever the shape that you want to capture. 
and it does that for you. So it's very nice. There's no like post cropping and you can just send it off right away. And the other cool thing is that they actually have Huawei Share. It's exactly the same thing as AirDrop on Apple where you can send your files from one Huawei device to the other. So for me, it's really interesting to see how Huawei is making their own ecosystem just like Samsung and Apple. Now moving on to the performance of these phones, it's using the Kirin 990 5G chipset with eight gigs of RAM. So I'm not really into technical specs, but what that means is that the phone is very fast. So when I'm using it, there's no lag at all. And I don't usually play games, but I tried to play PUBG on it and the graphics and all the motion and everything was really fluid and fast. So in my experience, the speed hasn't been an issue. It also has Wi-Fi 6, so everything has just been really fast. Now in the battery department, the phones have actually been very interesting. We literally filmed for like six to eight hours. And at the end of the day, when I went to bed, I still had like 8% of battery. So that really surprised me because I had my mobile data and my Wi-Fi going on the whole day as well. I didn't need to recharge it. And on a normal day, this actually lasts me two full days of use before I have to charge it again. So it's quite impressive. But note, on a normal day, I don't actually use my phone that much unless I'm doing something for Instagram or if I'm filming with it. So it's different for everyone, but I'm pretty sure it can last you a full day, like full use, no problem at all. But when I did need to charge it, I did find that the charging was really fast. I can get from zero to 100 in an hour and a bit. So as you might already know, Google mobile services aren't on these phones. And that means that there's no Google Play Store and some Google applications may not work. So when I received the P40 Pro Plus, the first thing I did was to transfer all my contacts and apps from my old phone to the new one. And this was actually very easy to do. I used the phone clone app and within a few presses, I was already transferring that data over to my new phone. So when the process was finished, I did find that most of my apps did transfer over. And I also found that there was a few apps that weren't compatible or didn't switch over, namely the Google apps. So like Google Maps, Chrome, Google Drive, and stuff like that. So to find the missing applications, I did go into Huawei's app gallery. That is their version of the Play Store where they have a ton of apps that you can search and download. I was able to download a few more apps that I needed, but I still could not find Chrome and Google Maps. So Huawei has a new feature called Pedal Search. And what it does is that when you type in the application name, it finds the APKs from APK Peer and APK Mirror. These are sites that are quite secure to download APKs from. I've done my research because I'm quite paranoid about security. So after Chrome worked, I downloaded Google Maps on Pedal Search as well. I found most of the apps that I needed on Pedal Search, so that feature is actually pretty useful. Now, there are still some apps that you can't find on Pedal Search. For me, this was YouTube, YouTube Studios, and my TD Banking app. So what I found was that when you search them in Pedal Search, it will actually take you to the website. And right when you open up the landing page, it will give you a option to add it as a shortcut to your homepage. And the other way to do it is to go into Chrome and actually make a browser shortcut on your homepage. So that's how I got my YouTube Studios and TD Banking shortcuts. And I did find these shortcuts to work very similarly to the apps. Because when you press into YouTube, it brings you to the mobile version of YouTube and you can start watching videos right away. And with YouTube Studio, it actually opens up the full page. So it actually gives me more information than the app. I just have to like zoom in to kind of see things. But what is important to note here is that although I have the Chrome and Google Maps app, I can't really use them to its full extent. For example, with the Chrome app, when you go into the settings, it won't let you log into any of your Google accounts. So you won't be able to access your bookmarks or your saved passwords. So that might be a bit troubling for people who rely on that a lot and have it all synced with their other devices. But the interesting thing here is that I can still sign into my Google account through the web browsers. I'll be able to go into YouTube and my account will be logged in so that I have my whole subscription list and all the videos are catered to me. And I'll also be able to use Google Drive as well. I can access it through the browser and still go into all my files. So generally, all the Google services that I usually use are still accessible through the browser. So the other important note here is that if you do play games like Gundam, which rely on Google Play services, it's not gonna run. And I haven't been able to find a workaround to fix that. So if you're a gamer, this might be really important for you. On this page is my most used apps and they all work really well. So after three or four days of using the phone and getting all the apps that I needed, I found that I couldn't really see a difference between this phone and any other Android phone. Using the P40 Pro Plus as my daily phone hasn't been a problem at all. So with all those things being said, I'm really, really impressed with the cameras and the hardware in the P40 Pro and Pro Plus. These are definitely cameras that I would use if I don't have a DSLR or a big camera and I just wanted to start getting into making content online. The other only criticism I have for the phones is that they aren't cheap. They are priced at a premium and that's because everything about the phone is premium. But again, for the app situation, if you're gonna pay the same price for another phone, which does have Google Store in it, it's like the pricing of this is a bit tricky. So I do know that Huawei is a huge 
huge company and that their app store is gonna keep on growing. And for myself, I'm just really excited to see how Huawei is gonna build their ecosystem and improve their systems later on so that this whole app thing would be seamless. So friends, I really hope this video helped you see if these phones are the right phones for you and how it is like really using it for like a month. So if you have any questions at all, please comment below. And in my future video, I am comparing these two phones. So if you haven't already yet, remember to subscribe with the notification bell on to get the latest updates about my channel from YouTube. And that's it for now, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.